Welcome to Musings of a Watch Collector, a carefully curated channel of all my timepieces. I will be showcasing each piece in detail to understand its historical and cultural significance. Let me take you on a horological journey that covers watchmakers from around the world, both past and present. So join me on my meanderings, Musings of a Watch Collector. and welcome back to another episode of Musings of a Watch Collector. This week we'll be looking at a relatively new, or shall I say reinvented, watchmaker. And they are Louis Vuitton, or LV. Let's first understand LV's history, from luggage to watches. It truly is a fascinating piece of history. I did write an article about this in my blog, which I'll provide the link to below. LV is one of the most recognized brands in the world, and it truly does have a fascinating history, spanning over 166 years, with an impromptu entry into the watch scene in 2002. Let's go back 166 years to Paris, where Louis Vuitton began his luggage empire. In 1854, he opened the world's largest luggage store in Paris. Not soon after, the world would come to know the famous LV monogram paired with geometric shapes soon after his death in 1896. Louis Vuitton is renowned for their fine leather goods, predominantly travel luggage such as trunks, suitcases, backpacks and steamer bags. Over time, they diversified into small leather goods such as wallets, card holders, leather folios and purses. Other modern day accessories included jewellery, sunglasses, clothing, and other apparel, which are now stapled in their 460 boutiques across 50 countries worldwide. Now that we know a brief history of this iconic brand, how on earth did a 166 year old company start crafting their own timepieces? LV soon became LVMH or Louis Vuitton Moe Hennessy SA, a behemoth of a luxury goods conglomerate who have been working to diversify their portfolio for years. So let's take a look now in order which watch companies they have acquired leading up to 2002. Christian Dior, a French luxury goods company founded in 1946, acquired by LVMH in 1987. Tag Heuer, renowned Swiss watchmaker founded in 1860, acquired by LVMH in 1999 for 780 million USD. Zenith, another renowned Swiss watchmaker, founded in 1865, acquired by LVMH in 1999 for an undisclosed amount. Through all of these acquisitions, LVMH aimed to create their own maison of jewellery and watches, and so they succeeded. And in 2002, they released the Tambour line of watches, which came in both quartz and automatic variants. There is no doubt that both of these movements leveraged both Zenith and Tag Heuer, and not to mention the utilization of Dior's watchmaking workshops of the Swiss watchmaker Ebel in the town of La Chaux de Fonds in Switzerland. LVMH have only been in the watchmaking business for 18 years, and through their acquisitions have a combined experience of centuries in watchmaking, and more so in their more recent acquisitions of Volgari, Hublot, and Tiffany & Co, the latter of which have had a significant working relationship with Patak Philippe since the 1850s. I was curious to understand how and why such a reputable brand suddenly decided to make watches and introduced their new line of watches aptly named Tambour, which is the French word for drum. They came onto the scene with much pomp and ceremony and garnered the attention of a very inquisitive watch community. Their initial line of watches included a time-only quartz and automatic movement, the latter of which utilised the Zenith El Primero movement which debuted in 1969 and in my view is one of the best movements ever made. I opted for the quartz model reference Q1112 with a brown sunburst style and an LV patterned black rubber strap. The dial markers are made of stainless steel finished in highly polished Arabic numerals that are also luminous, with matching hands and a very distinguished yellow second hand. 
The quartz movement is housed in a highly polished stainless steel case measuring 39mm. The dial is covered in a sapphire crystal with an LV signed crown adjacent to the date window. The stainless steel buckle is etched with Louis Vuitton and positioned on the end of an LV check patterned black rubber strap. The lugs are quite pronounced, with sharply designed edges attached to a case that is 9mm thick, purposely created to evoke the signature design and resemblance of a tambour. Around the side of the case that goes all the way around are engraved the letters that spell out Louis Vuitton. A nice touch. On the case back is a signature LV monogram set in a circular pattern with the LV symbol at its centre. It also indicates around this pattern that it is water resistant to 100 metres, Swiss made and includes a model number Q1112. There are also six screws that secure the case back. Overall this is a very beautiful piece and the quality is what I'd expect from a company in the calibre of Louis Vuitton. Their current line of tambour watches comes in quartz and automatic movements, but other variants which include the connected and GMT and Colbert lines. In creating this episode I've certainly learned a lot about Louis Vuitton and I look forward to seeing this contemporary watchmaker continue to evolve. Feel free to comment below and let me know your thoughts on this timepiece. Be sure to give it a like and subscribe to my channel. Also check out my official Instagram and blog in the links provided below in the description. Once again I'm Michael signing off for Musings of a Watch Collector. Take care and see you next time.